this is model 2 definition and a simple stochastic process and today is a lecture 2 simple stochastic process. In the lecture 1 we have seen the definition of a stochastic process and uh, the classification of a stochastic process based on a time space and the parameter space and we have given a few simple uh, stochastic process uh, via the classification. In this lecture we are going to discuss uh, some uh, simple stochastic process uh, starting with the uh, discrete time arrival process that is a Bernoulli process and a continuous time arrival process that is a Poisson process. Followed by that we are going to discuss the simple random walk, then we are going to discuss a, a one simple population process which arises in the branching process, then we are going to discuss the Gaussian process. So, with that the lecture uh, 2 will be over. What is Bernoulli process? Bernoulli process can be created by the sequence of a random variable. Suppose you think of a, a random variable x size where i is belong i takes a value 1, 2 and so on. Therefore, this is going to be a collection of random variable and uh, each random variable or x size and you can think of x size are going to be a iid random variables and each is uh, coming from the Bernoulli trials. That means, uh, each random variable is a uh, Bernoulli distributed each random variable is a Bernoulli distribution and uh, with the parameter p. So, the same thing can be written in the notation form x i takes the x i is or in the notation it is a capital B 1 comma small p. That means, uh, it is a binomial distribution with the parameters uh, 1 and p that is same as each x i is or Bernoulli distributed with the parameter 1 and p. So, now I can, so this is going to be a stochastic process or we can say it is a stochastic sequence. Now, I can define another random variable for every n s n is nothing but sum of first n random variables. Suppose, you think uh, x i is going to be the outcome of the ith trial. So, the x i can take the value 0 or 1 that means, uh, with the probability the x each x i can take the value k. If uh, k is equal to 0 with the probability 1 minus p and k taken k can take the value 1 with the probability p. Therefore, each since each x i is or i a d random variable you can come to the conclusion s n is uh, nothing but binomial distribution with the parameters n comma p. Suppose, you assume that uh, x i is going to be number of uh, uh, whether the arrival occurs in the i th trial or not if uh, x i takes the value 0 that means, uh, no arrival takes place in the ith trial. If x i takes the value 1 that corresponding to the ith trial there is an arrival. So, the s n represents s n denotes the number of arrivals in n trials. So, now you can create a stochastic process with the uh, s n where n takes a value 1, 2 and so on. Therefore, this is going to be a binomial process. So, the x i z takes a value uh, 0 or 1 with the probability uh, 1 minus p and uh, p uh, each one is going to be Bernoulli distributed. Therefore, this is going to be a Bernoulli process this x i's are going to form Bernoulli process. The way you have created s n is equal to sum of a first n random variable and each s n is going to be a binomial distribution with the parameters n and p. Therefore, this s n that sequence of s n for n is equal to 1 2 3 binomial process. Therefore, since uh, you have uh, uh, collected uh, arrivals over the uh, 
over the possible values of 1, 2 and so on. Therefore, this is going to be a one of the uh, discrete time arrival process. So, similarly we are going to explain what is the continuous time arrival process whereas, uh, here binomial process this is going to be a discrete time arrival process. Suppose you would like to see the trace of uh, S n. So, before you go to the trace of S n we can go for what is a trace or sample path of x i. For for different values of n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3 and so on. If you see each x i z r takes a value 0 or 1 therefore, it can take the value 0 or x 1 can take the value 1 or x 2 can take the value 0 or this can take the value 1 again it can take the value and 1 and 0. So, the possible values of x i z are going to be 0 and 1 therefore, each x i z can take the value 0 in the horizontal line or it can take the 1 till you get the next trial. Similarly, if you make the sample path or the trace of S n, the sample path or a, um, a trace of S n, since S n is going to be a sum of a first n random variable therefore, the based on the x i takes the value suppose the x 1 takes the value 0 and suppose x 2 take the value 1 and suppose x 3 takes the value 1 and so on. So, since x 1 is equal to 0 therefore, s 1 is 0 then at s 2 is same as x 1 plus x 2 therefore, it takes a value 1 and s 3 is equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 therefore, that is going to be again you are adding the values therefore, it is going to be a 2 therefore, this is 1 and this is 2. So, based on the x 4 it is going to be 0 or 1 either it can take the value 2 itself or it can go to the 3. Therefore, if you see the sample path of uh, S n it is going to be incremented either incremented by 1 or it takes the same value till the next n. Therefore, not only you can find out the S n you can not only you can find out the sample path of a can you can get the mean and variance because each s n is going to be a uh, binomial distribution with the parameters n and p. Therefore, the expectation of a s n is going to be n times p and the variance of a s n is going to be n times p into 1 minus p. So, you can able to see the sample path of uh, x i s as well as uh, s n over the different values of n. In discrete time sample paths are sequences. I can also define the new random variable capital T is nothing but number of number of trials up to and including the first that means, uh, suppose uh, it takes the value n that means, uh, for subsequent n minus uh, 1 trials I got the failures or no arrival takes place in the subsequent uh, n minus 1 trial and the nth trial I get the first arrival. That means, uh, the, the t is a random variable to uh, denote uh, how many trials to get the first success or the first arrival or the first arrival. So, if uh, it is going to take the first arrival in the nth trial then the probability of uh, t takes a value n that is same as 1 minus p into n minus 1 into p because all the trials are independent and uh, uh, subsequent n minus 1 trial gives no arrival and uh, the nth trial you get the first arrival. Therefore, this is going to follow a geometrical geometric distribution with the parameter p. So, since you know the distribution of t you can find out the mean and variance because the mean of a geometric distribution is going to be 1 divided by p and the variance of t is going to be 1 minus p divided by the p square. Similarly, I can go for <coughs> finding out what is the probability that it till nth trial I did not get the first or I did not get the first arrival. So, if 
n plus m at the trial if I am getting the first arrival what is the probability that it is going to take uh, after uh, m trials it get the first arrival that probability you can able to get uh, that is same as the probability of the t takes the value m. So, this property is called this property is called a memoryless property. Since T is a geometrically distributed and the geometric distribution satisfies the memoryless property that can be visualized in this example the probability of a T minus n is equal to m given that the T takes a value greater than n that is same as what is the probability that the T takes a value small m. That means, uh, the right hand side result is independent of the n and uh, it is the same as the distribution of that means, uh, the residual uh, arrival number of arrivals that is same as the original arrival distribution. Therefore, this satisfies the memoryless property. So, this is the geometric distribution satisfies the memoryless property in the discrete time and there is another distribution satisfies the memoryless property in the continuous time that is a exponential distribution. So, the way I have related the binomial distribution from the Bernoulli process, then I get the binomial process. Also, I, uh, I was able to create the geometric distribution. You can create the or you can develop the Pascal distribution or negative exponential distribution. The way I have uh, defined the capital T is going to be the number of trials to get the first success or first arrival. Instead of that, if I make another random variable to go for how many trials are needed to get the rth success, where r take can take the value greater than or equal to 1. If it is the rth first success is going to happen in the nth trial, if r is greater than 1, then I can go for defining what is a negative binomial distribution for that particular random variable. If r is equal to 1, then that is land up to be the same uh, the random variable capital T. So, till now we have discussed what is the what is the discrete time arrival process. Now, we are going to discuss the continuous time arrival process that is a Poisson process. So, in this lecture I am going to develop what is the Poisson process and how we can get the Poisson process from the scratch. Suppose, you consider the process of arrival of customers consider the process of arrival of customers at a barber shop. So, this is the same example we have uh, uh, discussed in the beginning of uh, this course also. So, over the time how many arrivals is going to take place that is going to be a random variable. So, let uh, n t n suffix t or some books they use as a n of t. So, the n of t denotes number of arrivals occur during the interval during the interval 0 to the closed interval 0 to t. That means, uh, we are defining a random variable n of t that denotes a number of arrival occurs during the interval 0 to t. For fixed t, n of t is going to be a random variable. Therefore, n of t over the time because t is greater than or equal to 0, this is going to be a since the possible values of a capital T uh, that is the parameter space is going to 0 to infinity. Therefore, this is going to uh, under the classification of a continuous uh, parameter or continuous time and the possible values of n of t for different values of t that is going to be takes a value 0 or 1 or 2 therefore, it is going to be a countably infinite therefore, this is going to be a continuous time or continuous parameter discrete state stochastic process. So, this is the n of t over the t greater than or equal to 0 that is going to be a continuous time discrete state stochastic process. 
now we are going to develop the uh, theory behind the Poisson process. To create the Poisson process, you need a few assumptions so that uh, you can able to develop the Poisson process. The first assumption in a small negligible interval, the if the interval is a t to t plus delta t, if the small uh, uh, negligible uh, interval is a t to t plus delta t, then the probability of one arrival is going to be lambda times delta t plus capital O of delta t. The probability of one arrival occurs during the interval t to t plus delta t is going to be lambda times that smaller interval delta t plus capital order of capital O delta t. Here the lambda is going to be strictly greater than 0 and we are going to discuss what is lambda and so on the in the later uh, after this uh, explaining the Poisson process. So, here the lambda is going to be a constant and which takes the value greater than 0 and the capital O delta t means uh, as a delta t tends to 0 the order of a delta t that is going to be tends to 0 as delta t tends to 0. So, this is the first assumption. The second assumption the probability of a more than one arrival is going to be a order of delta t. In a same interval t to t plus delta t more than one arrival in this uh, small negligible interval that probability is a order of delta t. That means uh, as a delta t tends to 0 this values is going to tends to 0. Then the third assumption occurrence of arrivals in a non overlapping intervals are mutually independent non overlapping intervals are independent so this is a very important assumption that means uh, what is the probability that the arrival occurs in a non overlapping intervals that probability is the same as the product of a probability of a arrival occurs in the each interval. Therefore, it is going to satisfy the independent property. Occurrence of events in non overlapping intervals are mutually independent. Therefore, the probability is going to be probability of intersection of all those things is same as the probability of individual probability and their product. So, with these three assumptions we are going to develop the Poisson process. So, what I am going to do since I started with the random variable n of t is the number of arrivals in the interval 0 to t, I am going to partition the interval 0 to t into n equal parts. I am going to I am going to partition the interval 0 to t into n equal parts. Since I made it the interval 0 to t into n equal parts, then each will be of the length t by n. And since I made the assumption the non overlapping intervals are independent and the probability of one arrival is lambda times delta t and the probability of more than one arrival is order of delta t and so on. Therefore, I can apply binomial distribution the way I have partitioned the interval 0 to t into n pieces. Therefore, this is going to be a of a n intervals of interval length t by n. Therefore, I can say what is the probability that I can able to find out what is the probability that k arrivals takes place in the interval uh, n intervals of uh, each length t by n. What is the probability that k arrivals takes place. Therefore, the possible values of k is going to be 0 to n and I can able to find out by using the binomial distribution what is the probability that n of t takes a value k. Since non overlapping intervals are independent and each probability of one sorry probability of one arrival is lambda times delta t where delta t is a t by n. So, each trial each interval behave as a Bernoulli trial whether the arrival occurs or there is no arrival and like that you have n such independent uh, trials. Therefore, the sum of uh, n independent Bernoulli trials land up uh, binomial trials. Therefore, by using the binomial distribution I can able to get what is the probability that n of t takes a value k that is a 
what is the possible NCK ways and uh, what is the probability of uh, arrival takes place in one interval that is lambda times this interval length is a t by n therefore, it is a lambda times uh, t by n power t by n power sorry t by n power <coughs> lambda times t by n power k and what is the probability of a no arrival takes place in each interval that is 1 minus lambda times t by n power n minus k. So, this is the way I can able to get what is the probability that k arrival takes place in the interval 0 to t by partitioning n, p, n intervals. So, this is the probability. But uh, the way I made a partition n equal uh, parts, so now I have to go for what is the result as a n tends to infinity. That means uh, my interest is what could be the result if uh, n tends to infinity of uh, k of uh, what is the probability that n t takes a value k as a n tends to infinity. Therefore, the running index for k is going to be 0, 1, 2 and so on. What is the probability of n t takes a value k? That means, in the right hand side I have to go for finding out as n tends to infinity what is the result for the right hand side what is the probability of n t takes a value k. We take uh, n tends to infinity because we need to study the limiting behavior of the stochastic process. So, that is same as limit n tends to infinity of n c k I can make it as a p power k where p is going to be lambda times t by n and 1 minus p power n minus k. Now, I have to find out what is the result for limit n tends to infinity of uh, this expression n c k p power k 1 minus p power n minus k where p is going to be lambda times t by n. If I do the simple uh, calculation, let me explain. So, the limit n tends to infinity that is same as limit n tends to infinity of n c k I can make it as a n factorial n minus k factorial and k factorial and that is a lambda t by n power k and that is 1 minus a lambda t by n power n minus k and that is same as the limit n tends to infinity of n factorial and here this n power k I can take it outside and n minus k factorial and a lambda t power k and divided by k factorial. So, this k factorial I take it inside and the power 1 minus lambda t by n power n minus k I split it into 1 minus lambda t by n power n into 1 minus lambda t by n power minus k. So, now I can look as n tends to infinity this is nothing to do with uh, n therefore, lambda t <coughs> power k by k factorial will come out. So, this result is going to be lambda t power k by k factorial and this will land up as n tends to infinity this is going to be e power minus lambda t and this will land up uh, 1 <coughs> and this is also land up 1 as n tends to infinity. Therefore, I may land up it is e power minus lambda t. Hence, the final answer of uh, what is the probability that k arrival takes place in the interval 0 to t that is going to be e power minus lambda t and uh, lambda t power k by k factorial and the possible values of k can be 0, 1, 2 and so on. For fixed t, for fixed t, if you see this is same as for fixed t, it is going to be a random variable. For all possible values of t, it is going to be a stochastic process. So, for fixed t, the n of t is a random variable and that probability mass function is e power minus lambda times t 
lambda t power k by k factorial. So, lambda is a constant for fixed t lambda into t that is going to be a constant. Therefore, the right hand side look like the probability mass function of the Poisson distribution. Therefore, for fixed t the n of t is a Poisson distribution the random variable n of t for fixed t it is going to be a Poisson distribution with the parameter lambda times t. Lambda is a constant and for fixed t, t is a constant. So, lambda multiplied by the t again this is going to be a constant. Therefore, for fixed t it is going to be a Poisson distribution with the parameter lambda multiplied t. Therefore, for possible values of t the n of t is going to form a stochastic process and since for fixed t it is going to be a Poisson distribution the collection of a random variable and each random variable is a Poisson distribution therefore, this is going to be called it as the Poisson process. The way I have we have explained earlier each random variable is a Bernoulli distributed random variable the collection of random variable is a Bernoulli process. Similarly, each S n is going to be a binomial distribution therefore, the collection is going to be a binomial process the same way for fixed t it is going to be a Poisson distribution therefore, that collection is going to be called it as Poisson process. So, now we have developed n of t is going to be a Poisson process because e for fixed t it is going to be a Poisson distribution therefore, this collection of a random variable is going to be called it as a Poisson process. <coughs> Here the lambda is a constant and there is another name for the default Poisson process is called a homogeneous Poisson process because there is another one called a non-homogeneous Poisson process in which the lambda need not be a constant it can be a function of a time t also. Therefore, the one we have derived now it is a homogeneous Poisson process in which the lambda is a constant which is greater than 0 when lambda is going to be a function of t the corresponding a Poisson process is called a non-homogeneous Poisson process. So, this is the one particular and very important continuous time or continuous parameter discrete state stochastic process that is a Poisson process or this is uh, also we can say this is going to be a very important uh, continuous time arrival process that is a Poisson process. The way we are counting n of t is going to be a number of arrivals over the interval 0 to t or number of occurrence of the event over the t the way you are counting over the time. Poisson process is an example of counting process. So, the n of t is also called a counting process. So, the Poisson process is also called it as the counting process. I can go for uh, giving the sample path of n of t over the time what is the different values of n of t is going to take. Obviously, n of 0 is equal to 0. Whenever uh, some arrival occurs in some time then the arrival is going to occur therefore, suppose the arrival occurs at this time I make it as the up arrow then the value of n of t is going to be incremented by 1 till the next arrival comes. Suppose the next arrival takes place at this time point then the n of t values is going to be 1 till that time and it is going to be a right continuous function that means, uh, the time point in which uh, the first arrival occurs uh, suppose you make it as a t 1. So, the n of uh, t 1 minus is going to be 0 and the t 1 and the n of t 1 plus t 1 as well as the n of uh, t 1 plus that is going to be 1 whereas, uh, the left limit uh, n of uh, t 1 minus that is going to be 0. Suppose, the second arrival occurs at the time some time point t 2 then the n of uh, t 2 minus that is a left limit at the time point t 2 that is going to be 1 and the n of uh, t 2 that is same as n of uh, t 2 plus that is going to be 2. So, therefore, it is incremented by 1. So, the values is going to be 2. So, he, this is the random amount random time in which the arrival is going to occur and the way we have made the assumption in a very small interval only one 
maximum only one arrival can occur. Therefore, the n of t is going to be a non decreasing right continuous and increased by jump of size 1 at the time epoch of arrival. So, whenever you see the sample path of uh, uh, the Poisson process, it is always going to be a non decreasing right continuous and increase by a jumps of size 1 at the time of at the time epoch of arrivals. Now, I am going to relate the another random variable which involves in the Poisson process or I am going to discuss the another stochastic process which involved in the Poisson process. So, for that I am going to define the new random variable as let t suffix k be the time of kth arrival. So, k can take the value 1 or 2 and so on. So, therefore, the t b the random t b the random variable takes a, what is the time point in which the kth arrival occurs. That means, the way I have given the sample path in the previous slide the t 1 and t 2 the small t 1 and t 2 are the different values of the capital T k. I am going to define another random variable x suffix k be the successive inter arrival times of kth customer. So, now the k can take the value 1, 2 and so on. So, the t k be the time point whereas, the x k be the inter arrival time. That means, uh, the x 1 is nothing but t 1 minus t 0 and obviously, t 0 is 0. Therefore, x 1 is the same as t 1 and x 2 is nothing but t 2 minus t 1. That means, what is the inter arrival time for the second arrival? That inter arrival time is what time the first arrival occurs that is a t 1 and what time the second arrival occurs that difference is going to be the inter arrival of the second customer. So, this is the way I can define x k is going to be t suffix k minus t suffix k minus 1. So, now the running index for k can take the value 1 and so on obviously, t 0 is going to be 0. Our interest is to find out what is the distribution of what is the distribution of x k for all k 1, 2 and so on. Is it feasible to find out the distribution of x k? It is possible first we can start with k equal to 1 what could be the distribution of x 1. Then once we get the x 1 distribution the same analysis can be repeated to get the distribution of x 2 and x 3 and so on because uh, the scenario which you are going to take it for finding out the distribution of x 1 that is the same as for the x 2 and so on. So, now our interest is to find out what is the distribution of x 1 first we will try to find out that x 1 only. Now, we will find out the distribution of x 1. Since x 1 is a continuous random variable, we can go for finding out what is the complement C d f of x 1. So, this is the complement C d f of x 1 that is nothing but what is the probability that the first arrival occurs after time t. That is same as what is the probability that till time t no customer enter into the system the left hand side is the unknown whereas, the right hand side is the known one. So, we are relating two different random variable. So, here this is the what is the probability that the first arrival occurs after time t that is same as what is the probability that no arrival takes place during the interval 0 to small t. 
but we know what is the probability of a n t is equal to 0 because just now we have made it for each t this is going to be a Poisson distribution with the parameter lambda times t. Therefore, the probability of a n t equal to 0 that is same as e power minus lambda t and lambda t power 0 by 0 factorial and this is same as e power minus lambda t. So, the left hand side is the unknown the unknown is uh, what is the probability that x 1 takes a value greater than t that is same as e power minus lambda t. Therefore, you can get what is the probability of x 1 less than or equal to t that is same as 1 minus e power minus lambda t. So, this is going to be a what is a CDF for the random variable x 1 and the CDF of x 1 is the same as the CDF of exponential distribution with the parameter lambda times uh, t. Therefore, you can come to the conclusion x 1 is going to be a exponentially distributed the x 1 is exponentially distributed with the parameter lambda. So, the unknown uh, distribution x 1 first we are trying to find out what is a complement CDF of x 1 and that land up to be e power minus lambda t. Therefore, the CDF of x 1 is going to be 1 minus e power minus lambda t. The, from this we conclude the x 1 is going to be exponential distribution with the parameter lambda where lambda is uh, greater than 0. The way we have compute the the way we get the distribution of x 1 similarly one can show x 2 that is uh, the inter arrival time of the second uh, customer entry into the system that is also can be proved it is exponential distribution with the parameter lambda. Not only x 2 we can go for the further all the x size. So, we can able to prove all the x size are going to be exponential distribution with the parameter lambda for i takes a value 1, 2 and so on. Not only that we can able to prove all the x i's are independent random variable also and identical with the exponential each one is exponential distribution with the parameter lambda. Therefore, the way we land up relating Poisson process with the inter arrival time. So, this x i's will form a discrete time or discrete parameter continuous state stochastic process in which each random variable x i is going to be a exponential distribution with the parameter lambda and all the x i's are i i d random variable also. And this each x i s are nothing but inter renewal time. Therefore, this is going to be call it as renewal process. We are going to discuss the renewal process in detail uh, later of this course, but uh, here I am just uh, explaining how will you la create the renewal process from the Poisson process and the n of t is a Poisson process for different values of t, whereas the inter arrival time that is the time in which the renewal takes place or the arrival takes place. Therefore, uh, the renewals will form a stochastic process and that corresponding process is called a renewal process. Therefore, this is going to be a one particular type of renewal process in which the renewal takes place of a exponentially distributed time intervals and all the times are IAD random variables also. Now, I am going to explain how we can create the sample path of the Poisson process using the MATLAB code. So, since I said uh, the Poisson process is uh, related with the inter arrival times or exponential distribution. So, I can start with uh, the time 0 there is no customer in the system and I can go for what is the maximum time I need the sample path. Then I can keep on create the random variables from the random variable I can generate uh, the exponentially distributed the time event then I can shift the time event by t of i plus 1 by adding 
the next exponentially distributed time event, then I can go for plotting the sample path. So, this is the one sample path in which over the time from 0 to 10, the number of arrivals occurs in the interval 0 to time 0 to 10 in the form of that means, uh, there is a one arrival occurs at this time. Therefore, the n of t values is incremented by 1 and it is taking the same value and uh, when at the second arrival occurs, then the increment is taken by 2 and so on. So, and if you see carefully the sample path, you can find out the increment is always by 1 over the time and there is no two arrival or more than one arrival in a very small interval of time and uh, you can come you can able to see the inter arrival time that is going to be a exponentially distributed with the parameter lambda whatever the lambda I have chosen in this uh, sample path. So, this is the way the sample path of uh, the Poisson process look like. Now, we are going to discuss the third type of stochastic process that is a simple random walk. So, how we can create the simple random walk? Let me explain. You have a probability space, you have a probability space. From the given probability space, you define a sequence of random variable x size and those random variables are integer valued random variables. each x i's are integer valued random variable. Not only that, all the x i's are i a d random variables also. All the x i's are i a d random variables and each one is a integer valued discrete type random variable. As a special case, as a special case, I can go for the random variable x i takes a value 1 or minus 1 with the probability p and 1 minus p. This is a special type of random work. In general, I am going to define the in general random work also. As a special case, I will go for the random variable x i takes the value 1 with the probability p and uh, x i takes the value minus 1 with the probability 1 minus p, where uh, the p can take the value 0 to 1. Now, I am going to define the random variable S n that is nothing but sum of x i's, sum of first n x i's that is going to form a, the random variable S n and the, ran, the stochastic process S n or the stochastic sequence S n for different values of n, this will form a simple random walk the S n is going to form a simple random walk. Why it is simple? Because it is going to take a integer valued random variable and each values are going to take each random variable is going to take the value 1 or minus 1. Therefore, this is going to be called it as a simple random walk. In general, in general the k can take the any integers accordingly you, you land up a having a yes sense are going to be a random work and I am going to give the another special case when p is equal to off that means uh, each x i random variable takes a value 1 with the probability of or minus 1 with the probability of then that random work is going to be called it as a symmetric random work. Why it is symmetric? Because with the probability of it takes a forward one step or with the probability of it takes a backward one step. Therefore, that type of a random work is called a symmetric random work. In general, if it takes a value 1 or minus 1, then it is called a simple random work. If a k can take a any integers, then it is going to be called it as a generalized random work. So, this is this random walk can be created in a simple example of two persons coin toising game also. This simple uh, random walk can be explained 
by the example two persons a coin tossing example in which you have a person A and B if at the end of the coin tossing if he is going to head then he is going to win rupees 1 or if he is going at the end of the uh, nth coin tossing if it is going to get the tail then he is going to be loose in this game if A wins, then B gives rupees 1 to A and if A loses, then A gives rupees 1 to B. So, accordingly I can go for creating a random variable x n or x i for i is equal to 1, 2 and so on. Therefore, x i denotes what is the amount of the person A earning at the ith game. Similarly, we can construct a stochastic process for player B and calculate the measures of interest. I can go for uh, creating a random variable S n is nothing but summation of x i is where i is equal to 1 to n. Therefore, the S n denotes what is the amount earned by the person A at the end of n at the game. That is what is the total amount. So, the x i denotes uh, how much he is going to earn at the end of each game whereas, the S n is going to be the total amount earned by the person A at the end of uh, first n games. Therefore, this S n is going to form a simple random walk, where x i's are going to take an integer value with the value 1 and minus 1 with the probability p it is going to take the it is going to take the value 1 or it is going to take the value minus 1 with the probability 1 minus p. So, I am just relating the simple random walk with the simple scenario of a two persons a coin toising game. If you see the sample path of the S n First, I can go for what is the sample path of each x size. Each x size can take the value 1 or minus 1, therefore, it is going to take the value 1 or minus 1. Therefore, if uh, x 1 takes a value 1, it is 1. If uh, x 2 takes a value minus 1, it is uh, like this. If uh, x 2 takes the value minus x 3 takes a value minus 1, then it is here. If uh, uh, x 4 takes the value 1, then it is like this. So, this is a sample path of x i over the i. The way I have given the x i's, now I can go for, sorry, now I can go for writing what is the possible values of n and what is the possible values of s. So, since uh, x 1 is equal to 1, therefore, s 1 is going to be 1 and uh, x 2 is going to be minus 1, therefore, it takes a value 1 plus minus 1, therefore, it is going to be 0 and uh, x 2 is going to be minus 1, therefore, s 2 is x 3, s 3 is going to be minus 1 and x 4 is going to be 1, therefore, it is going to be again 0. So, this is the way the sample path goes over the n. So, this is the one sample path for the possible values of x i takes a value 1 and minus 1. Accordingly, I have drawn the sample path of s n over the n. Since uh, x i's are going to take the value 1 and minus 1 and with the probability p and uh, with the probability 1 minus p takes a value minus 1, I can go for finding out what is the expectation of x i that is nothing but uh, x i is equal to p plus uh, minus 1 times 1 minus uh, p. Therefore, this is nothing but uh, 2 p minus 1. So, when I go for discussing the symmetric random walk when the p is equal to off, then the expectation of each x i is going to be 0 and also I can able to find out what is a e of x i squares that is going to be 1. Not only that, when p is equal to off, I can able to find out what is the expectation of uh, S n that is going to be 0 and the variance of uh, S n is going to be 
n and I can go for writing what is the expectation of s n by root n power n power 2 that is going to be 1. So, the way I have uh, got the result for uh, expectation of uh, s uh, expectation of x size and the expectation of uh, s n I can go for what is the limiting distribution of s n. So, using central limit theorem I know what is the mean for uh, each s n and I know what is the variance of each s n also. Therefore, using a CLT I can able to conclude s n divided by square root of e n minus the mean of this random variable is 0 divided by the standard deviation is going to be 1 and this as a n tends to infinity this will be a standard normal distribution where z is going to be a standard normal distribution as a n tends to infinity and this convergence is via distribution. That means, I can able to conclude the distribution of s n by square root of n as n tends to infinity in distribution this sequence of random variable will converges to the standard normal in distribution. I can go for creating what is a sample path of uh, the simple uh, random walk uh, by using the MATLAB code. So, for that I have to fix what is the initial position and uh, what is the maximum number of uh, steps I would like to go for finding the sample path and what is the probability of uh, success in uh, each uh, for uh, what is a forward move probability accordingly it is going to take the value 1 with the probability p and it is going to take the value minus 1 with the probability 1 minus p. So, I am giving the value of p only and then I am just going for the possible values of s n by adding the 1 or minus 1 accordingly I am just writing the sample path of s size. So, if you see the sample path over the time 0 to 20 and each exercise are going to take the value 1 or minus 1 accordingly the s n is going to take the same value or incremented by 1 or decremented by minus 1 according to the values of x size. Therefore, this is going to be the one sample path which is depicted using the MATLAB code. So, this is the earlier I have shown the same graph this is the s n as n tends to infinity here you can see the different uh, sample path for as n tends to infinity you can find out what is the distribution of a s n divided by square root of n as n, ten, as n tends to infinity also and this figures it has a three different sample path and one can observe what is the amount uh, of a person a have as n tends to infinity that depends on whether it is he is going to take the positive value or he is going to have the negative value depends on the first few games that you can be observed from this diagram. The first few the first few uh, results whether he is going to gain by 1 rupee or he is going to lose by 1 rupee accordingly the possible values of s n will go as n tends to infinity. Now, we are going to discuss the fourth uh, simple stochastic process that comes in the population model. Now, we will see the fourth simple stochastic process arises in the population model. You consider a population of uh, tigers in India. So, that is going to be a for over the time this is going to be form a stochastic process. So, I am going to make the assumption at the end of its lifetime it produces a random amount random number x of offspring with the probability mass function that is the probability of x takes the value k that is a k where it satisfies a, a k's are going to be greater or equal to 0 and the summation is going to be 1. And also I am making the assumption all the offsprings act independently of each other and at the end of their lifetime individually can have a pregnancy accordance with the probability mass function the same uh, probability of x size uh, takes the value k with this uh, s n with this uh, s n will form a 
discrete uh, time and the discrete state stochastic process where S n is the population size of a tiger at the end of nth generation. And if you see the sample path of S n over the different generation, suppose you make it S naught is equal to 0 and suppose you make it S 1 is equal to X 1 and suppose X 1 takes the value 3 and then the second generation S 2 is going to be X 1 plus X 2 plus X 3. And suppose you make it x1 takes the value 3 and x2 takes the value 0 and x3 takes the value 1, then we have a s2 is going to take the value 4. So, if you see the sample path of sn over the n, it is going to take the value 1, then it is going to take the value 3, then it is going to take the value 4 and so on. And this is a sample path of the population size of a tiger over the nth generation and this is going to form a discrete time, discrete state stochastic process. And there is another stochastic process Gaussian process that I will discuss in the later lectures. And uh, in this lecture we have covered uh, the arrival process of the two type, one is a discrete time and the another is a continuous time arrival process. And we have also discussed the random walk and we have discussed a simple stochastic process arises in the population model and the Gaussian process that I will discuss later and the references books are much. So, with this uh, I will complete the model 2 of uh, definition and the simple stochastic processes. Thank you.